to me was very nice guy, you know, and, but uh, mm, I didn't know this is when it, it was going to happen. So that's why I'm shocked. The people Esteban Santiago met in Alaska and even his run-ins with police gave little hint of what was to come. Our search of public records found Santiago lived at this South Anchorage mobile home park in 2014 and for part of 2015. A different family has lived there for the past year, but directed us to the landlord who owns the mobile home and remembers Santiago as a polite, friendly guy excited about life in the military. Well, I met him like two and a half years ago. Victor Hurtado is also a local restaurant owner. He told me he was from Puerto Rico and him and his brother lived there for like maybe, well, his brother, he only stayed there like one month and then he went back to Puerto Rico and the other guy stayed another four months and then he moved out because he's going to go to a, uh, uh, military. Hurtado was visited today by the FBI who showed him a picture of the alleged shooter. It was indeed the same man, Hurtado told Channel 2. You know, I'm like scared, you know, not scared, but I'm like big shock, you know, like I didn't know he was going to do something like this. While in Esteban Santiago was the subject of an eviction case in 2015 at another address in Anchorage, Hurtado said Santiago was a reliable tenant to him. In late 2015, Santiago listed his employer on court records as Signal 88 Security. He wrote in court paperwork that he worked at 188 West Northern Lights, an upscale Midtown office building. When we called Signal 88's number in Alaska, a man answered the phone but refused to talk. We're currently under the uh, advisement of the federal authorities and uh, we've currently got no comment, sir. And with that, he hung up the phone. James Foster says Esteban Santiago had already been working there for months when he was hired as a security patrolman in 2015. Patrolling different businesses, you go to one business, uh, go around a little bit, make a quick report, um, and for any damage, vandalism, you know, drunks. A job Foster liked, and Santiago was a colleague he trusted. He and I would uh, just chill after work and, you know, um, if I needed help on a security job or a security gig, like there's uh, vagrants that won't leave that are causing trouble, I'd say, I'd call him a lot of the times and say, hey, uh, can you come back me up? We don't know exactly how long Santiago patrolled Anchorage streets and businesses, but he listed Signal 88 as his employer on court paperwork dated October 2015. Signal 88 isn't answering any of our questions. So we're currently under the uh, advisement of the federal authorities and uh, we've currently got no comment, sir. That response was recorded on Friday, the day of the Fort Lauderdale shooting. Today, the company's Nebraska headquarters referred us again to the Anchorage franchise, where a vice president did not return our calls. Santiago's Alaska criminal record in 2016 included a domestic violence charge and a subsequent agreement to attend anger management classes. Both developments raised questions about his eligibility to work here as a security guard. The Alaska Department of Public Safety website says security guards are required by state law to obtain a special license. The application asks, quote, are you the subject of a domestic violence injunction or order? Applicants must sign a form saying they are, quote, free from any psychopathic condition or mental illness that might affect their performance. The Alaska Public Safety Commissioner's Office referred our questions about Santiago's employment qualifications to Alaska State Troopers. Channel 2 is pursuing a records request for that information from the state. Foster says that when he was hired, he was not asked to obtain a security guard license. There were few requirements. A high school diploma, valid driver's license, not very many moving violations. He says he never heard Santiago talk about mind control or ISIS, the red flag Santiago mentioned to the FBI in November. When you're with someone, they give you the vibe of who they are, um, their intentions, and he was calm, he was soft-spoken. Not the person seen in this video, acquired by TMZ, behind the trigger that left five dead. When I saw the video of him in the airport pulling out a pistol and they started shooting like, I don't know what to think. I'm startled. I'm stunned that I was that close to this guy. I raced him. I was friends with him. I was, I, I was, uh, uh, worked under him. In fact, Santiago helped to train Foster in his new role, guarding Alaskans. 
26-year-old Esteban Santiago lived in Anchorage for at least two years prior to the airport killings. But it wasn't until after he was charged by the city with domestic violence and property damage that he applied for and was given a state of Alaska security guard license. Santiago still held an active license even after he visited the FBI building downtown talking of mind control and ISIS, and authorities seized his handgun. APD transported uh, him to a mental health facility where he was admitted. We now know that Santiago lost his security guard job with Signal 88 a week later. According to this employee separation form dated November 15th, the local Signal 88 owner wrote Santiago was let go due to his, quote, current documented mental illness affecting his judgment and reason. The company cited a state regulation which states security guards are prohibited from obtaining a license if they suffer from certain mental illnesses. But it wasn't until January 8th that the state of Alaska inactivated Santiago's security guard license, two days after the shooting.